everybody. It's Vic from Vic's Creative Corner. Today we are going to talk about a product called Loop Deck. For this video, I am going to be using the software and the UI on navigation purposes, setting up a Loop Deck CT. However, the most popular hardware currently is the Loop Deck Live. Um, I believe they actually have a Razor edition that is with Loop Deck Live, but it serves the same functionality as Loop Deck and Loop Deck CT. I believe there's one in development called Loop Deck S. I believe it's going to be the same functions as Loop Deck Live with maybe a few minor differences on the hardware. Let's get started. So when you launch Loop Deck for the first time, it's going to take a moment. So the UI will pop up as soon as it recognizes everything on the device. So it's going to say, let's get started with Loop Deck. The short guide will show you the basics of using Loop Deck software to customize your console. So they call the Loop Deck a console. And it's telling you how to do the actions, how to set things up. Um, they, from what I understand, have tried to make this very user friendly on the UI. Let's get started. So this is a Loop Deck Live that they're showing you on how to navigate everything here. And no, we're not going to send them our data. We're going to launch Loop Deck. Let's get started here. Okay, let's go ahead and maximize this so that way we have a full working screen here. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is our device. This is our device, and if we switch it, there's Loop Deck Live. I do not have a Loop Deck Live, but I did do an unboxing of one. So let's go ahead and get started with the CT because this is going to be ours. There is a main profile. And then there are additional profiles that are automatically embedded into this particular hardware. I actually do have profiles that I've got from Sideshow FX. So let's go ahead and import those first. Okay, so let's start with Affinity Photo because this is something that I use. And it'll ask you to select the program to open it with. And I am just gonna call this Affinity Photo. I know what it is. So we're gonna select OK. So anytime I launch this program, it's going to take me to utilizing this as tools to do my editing process. Um, I do love this dial because it, it's so much easier when I'm adjusting something. But let's go ahead and import our next profile. And that is going to be our Lightroom Classic. And yes, these are all from Sideshow Effects. And so now it's going to import the particular profile I love using. All right, let's go ahead and import our next one, which is going to be our Photoshop. And I'm just gonna leave this as Photoshop. And I think it overwrites the original one that's embedded with it because there are plugins for it automatically, which I think is great. But uh, if you have profiles, you probably want to use those instead. So I have purchased these. This has come out of my own pocket with the exception of the Loop Deck CT. This was actually provided to me by Crabs. Thank you, Crabs. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the next area. So right now we're just going to go to our Windows default. We've got those things installed. We're going to go and look at our Windows default, right? Because that's our main one. I don't really use anything aside from the things I just imported, so I'm not too worried about anything else. You cannot remove them. Um, this is something that's automatically set up from the get-go when you open up the software. So workspace, this is going to be the area that we're going to be currently using day in, day out, whether it's going to be for our editing, our streaming, etc. Now, I'm a streamer. I live stream, but I also edit. So this tool is awesome. It is awesome awesome for editing. I hands down will use this because of the dials. But, and I say but, I prefer using my stream deck when streaming. Um, but we can use this the same way that we would our stream deck. Um, and, and we're going to actually just focus on loop deck. So this is totally just loop deck here. We're going to create our new workspace. I'm going to call this streaming because I'm going to show you all how to set up OBS using this. So we don't need the clock, right? Because when are we going to look at a clock when we're streaming? We're busy doing other things. <laughs> All right. So the first thing first, OBS has to be recognized with the WebSocket. And before I do that, I do have to sign in. See this up here? It's a sign into Loop Deck. I totally forgot to do that. I do have a login for it. So let me sign in real quick. All right. So once it recognizes OBS, it is going to tell you Loop Deck is connected. 
Now, in order for it to recognize OBS, you're going to actually have to go to OBS WebSocket plugin. And this may change when it comes to OBS 28. I don't know what Loop Deck has in the works. But here is where we're going to go to the OBS WebSockets. And it's going to tell you to go to GitHub. And in order to do this, you're going to go here to OBS WebSocket 5.0.1. And you can actually install 4.9.1 as well as 5.0.1. So what I usually do is I go to the compact Windows zip because the zip files has the 64 files that I need when I'm actually running OBS for the WebSocket to work. Um, and then you could do the same thing right here with the 5.0.1. Some functionalities that I require require 4.9.1 and I actually covered that on another video. But you can use either of these and Loop Deck will recognize OBS. Loop Deck is working and operating off of a WebSocket, so just keep that in mind. With that, I am going to actually tab over my uh, Internet Explorer because the next thing we're going to do, and I want to make sure that you all don't have like my sign-in stuff <laughs> just for privacy concerns, we're going to sign into Twitch. <laughs> and we're basically going to click on it. If you've already logged into your browser on Twitch, it'll automatically just pick it up for you, and it'll automatically log you in. Um, the next thing is if you have Streamlabs, I do not, um, you can actually do the same functionality setup for Streamlabs, but we're going to be using OBS. You can actually also toggle your Philips Hue. I do not have a Philips Hue, so I will not be doing these two right here. So these are kind of obnoxious little notification red dots, right? Well, how do I get rid of them if I'm not going to use them? You can come here and you can hide them. So we're going to go back to here. We're going to click on the setting wheel right here, and we're just going to come here and hide them. If you use an MIDI controller, you can actually set this up as well, but we're, we're not going to do that. I'm just basically using this for streaming functionality and editing functionality. Granted, I use, again, my Stream Deck for streaming. Uh, I use my Stream Deck for a lot of stuff, but I do like to see competition. And I do want to say that there are some things that Loop Deck has right that uh, I would love to see a change happen with Elgato. But don't get me wrong, I love my Stream Deck and I will tell you why later. But right now we're going to just focus on Loop Deck. So the first thing I want to do, right, we've created our new workspace up here, which is called Streaming. And uh, we should probably get rid of this functionality here because we're not going to need that. But I want to be able to make sure that I'm in my workspace. So the first thing that I'm going to do, is I'm going to go to Loop Deck Device Actions. So what is Loop Deck? It looks like this internet browser or navigation tool. And this is all your Loop Deck functionality. So think of it like a system for Loop Deck. Um, so here's my workspace, and this is my streaming. I'm going to drag it over to 3 because 3 is the next available button for me. And everything is a clean slate now. The first thing I want to do is I actually want to get rid of the clock and the, the wheel because I'm not going to use these functions, but I'm going to actually add it as a brand new page and put a one button here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is get rid of the clock and I am going to rename this my Wave XLR. Because I actually want to use this to function my audio in OBS to control it, to mute, to lower, to heighten my microphone. Not that I really do that because I actually um, have it set a way that I want it. But for functionality purposes, to show you how to control your audio mixer in OBS with your loop deck, we're gonna get started on that. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to my OBS area, which is going to be this function here. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our microphone. So I'm going to go to General Audio. And you can select between General Audio Mute or General Audio. It's going to do the functions for both of them. So I'm going to select my Elgato Wave XLR. And it's going to go under Stored OBS Studio Actions. And what I'm going to do is click this open right here. And I'm going to click on the function to mute and the dial to turn the audio up or down. Now I want to create a second page. 
And the reason why I'm going to do another one button is because I also use a voice mod. And what I'm going to do is rename this voice mod mic. And the reason why is because I want to be able to swipe between either function and adjust the volume if needed. So if somebody tells me that my microphone is too loud, I can adjust it at the quick dial turn of the wheel. So let's go ahead and create another general audio action, except this time we're selecting voice mod and we're gonna create. So you see how it created both functions right here. So now what I'm gonna do is drag the wheel over here and the mute over here. So if I wanna swipe between them, I can. Now I'm doing that on the device so y'all can't see it, but to swipe between pages, you literally, on the actual little screen, just swipe it left or right and it'll take you to whatever function you set up for that particular button. Now, let's just say I wanted this to be in number one and this workspace I'm not gonna use. So I can actually drag this here and we can actually change the page layout on what we want for our button function to be one, two, three, four through eight. So we can move that around with ease. Um, this automatically saves it so there's no saving it does it for you, which I think is pretty cool. Now, I don't know about backups yet, but we'll cover that once I figure that part out. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is set up some audio sources. We have these right here. These are not just buttons. These, as you can see, have turn dials as well. So the turn dials are going to be something that we can actually control our audio mixer with, right? So let's go to volume mixer at this point. Volume mixer is going to be the next audio sources that we have in our audio mixer outside of our microphones. So I'm gonna to go to my end game because that is where I use these things. And we're gonna start with our Wavelink browser. We're gonna create it and I'm just gonna drag this over here. And if we look, it brought the, the wheel here, but now I have to create the volume mixer mute. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and I'm gonna go down to my browser and I'm gonna create the mute button. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this here. So now we can see that it has both the browser and the mute. So I'm gonna do this for each of my adjustments. And as you can see, it tells you what is right here on the actual loop deck. So it gives you a visual of what the dials are on the sides. That's what those black bars are for. Alrighty, and when I say these black bars, I'm talking about right here and right here. And as you can notice, it says dial page one. These are the dials and buttons. So you would swipe up or swipe down on your screen here to get to the next set of dials. And then if you wanted to page right here, you would page from left to right to get to the next page here. Um, and, and same thing right here with the dial button, you would just go from left to right, swiping on the actual screen of the dial and not turning the dial. Because if you're turning the dial, you're just turning the function that you created. All right, so we're gonna go back to volume mixer. Now we're going to do in game and we're going to do game this time. So we're gonna create the function for the game and then we're gonna do the same thing again, but for the mute. So we're gonna go to our in game and then we're gonna go to the in game mute. So what I'm gonna do is drag this here and drag this here. So Okay, it has this one, but it didn't do this one. There we go. So now we have our game right here, and I can actually adjust the audio to the game with the WebSocket. The next one we're gonna do, of course, we're going in order, is going to be our music. So rinse and repeat. This time we're gonna look for music. So we created the mute function for it. Now we need to create the dial function for it. Now, again, this is not controlling Wavelength. This is controlling your audio mixer in OBS. I do not want to confuse you all. There is no official plugin to control Wavelength with this yet, but um, some people do create plugins and they release them as open source. And there is actually one lurking about. All righty. So, Volume Mixer, the next one is going to be our sound effects. 
and we're going to go to our volume mixer mute and we're going to choose the same thing sound effects so the reason why i'm doing this one by one is because there's no way to create like a multi-action with this particular software So if you want to know if you you drag and drop them over, it should retain it. But if not, you can always click on the button just to make sure it's stored it. All right, the next one that we're going to do is going to be our system, because I like my alerts to come through my stream through my Wavelink as my system default. And now we're going to create the dial button for it. All right, so drag and drop. All right, there we go. So now we're able to see that the system is here. And I'm gonna show you a really cool preview once we have everything set up for the dials, because I'm basically showing you all how to navigate this, but also how to set it up. Um, and then we can talk about the OBS functions in here as well. And we'll set that up too and how to make the icons look pretty. <laughs> I promise you, we will. Okay, so the last one I need to do is in-game. And this one is going to be our voice party, our, our voice chat. So that's gonna be for the dial. And then we need to do the mute. All right, here we go. Let's put it in the wrong spot. So we just wanna make sure, see how it didn't copy over? We can still drag and drop it there. So everything is set up for the audio source. Now I wanna show you all because I am gonna actually do this on the console or you know the loop deck. And I'm gonna actually just turn the voice chat functions and now you can see that the dials are changing. They're literally changing the voice chat. I think voice chat, I've kept it around here or something. I don't even remember what I set it up as. We'll just leave it at that. But if I wanted to change the microphone, I could do that real quick too. I don't know if I muted myself. I don't think I did. I can mute it right now. So yeah, you can actually do this and it is very smooth on the dials. And when you feel the haptic feedback, you know that something, if you double tap something, it tells you you're doing too many things at once. So it's pretty cool. I really do enjoy using that particular functionality for the audio mixer in OBS. Um, granted, you can do the same thing when it comes to the software, like if you needed to edit or fine tune something in Lightroom, and this thing is a godsend for it. I love using my Stream Deck though, but um, there's some things that a dial just feels natural to. So audio sources, for example, either a slider or a dial, it just feels natural to adjust the audio on it. So I love this functionality. Now, again, this is just controlling the audio mixer in OBS. So if I'm, if I'm able to, if YouTube allows me to, I will put markers up because we're gonna talk about the next object, which is setting up the actual functions here. And that is going to be, for example, our sources. So in our sources, you know, I have like my whole bunch of stuff here. We're not gonna worry about the audio because we've already taken care of that. But say I wanted to toggle between my 4K60 Pro, you know, my capture card when I'm streaming on console or capturing on console in OBS, and I wanted to switch. Okay, so here's our source, and I can actually just put that here to toggle between it. So if I tap it, you're going to see that it comes on the screen there. And it's a really cool thing to turn your sources on and off, and you get haptic feedback as you touch that. So we can do another source. And the other one I toggle between is going to be my game capture. Game capture, not to confuse you, this is not through the capture card, this is a PC capture. I have a one PC setup, so I actually use OBS to capture my PC game. And uh, I can toggle between that, turning that on and off. 
And then the last one that I usually set up is going to be my display capture. And uh, that one is going to be under in-game. And right here, display capture. So yes, I mean, you literally have to look for where it takes you to make sure that you're putting it here. So as you can see, this one is bright. If I turn it off, my screen disappears, as you can see. So the next thing is, you know, when I'm streaming, I use a camera. And sometimes I turn my camera off at night because, you know, it's dark. The animals need to come out and eat because they're nocturnal. We'll put the camera up here. So if I wanted to turn my camera on, you would see my little logo and everything pop up for when I go live streaming. All right. So the next one, and you've noticed that we're just literally going back and forth between sources right now. We're going to go back to in-game because that's where I store everything. And uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and run a CTA from VBI here. And this, basically I tap the button and it tells you about visual by impulse. You get a discount, by the way. And uh, check it out. I'm actually using their outros for the beginning and ending of this video. You do get a 5% discount using that code, by the way. Now, it'll constantly loop, so I'm going to turn it off here. And I can do that with the tap of a button. I cannot set it up as a multi-action. Um, that's the one thing I've learned, that I cannot do multi-actions in this particular device. This device is more of a one-button type situation. Um, so it's great for editing. And it's great for precision when it comes to dials, but it does not do multi-actions. So if you're looking at something where you can do multi-actions, you might want to probably look at an alternative. Right now, again, we're just talking about loop deck. All righty. So the next thing that we're going to talk about, you can switch between scenes. And most people do this when they're actually streaming. So here's my starting soon. And we'll put this... Let's move this stuff down here. We'll put this one at the, the top. We'll go to our next scene, which is just chatting. I rarely use this one, <laughs> but it's there, right? It's there just in case. All righty. Our next scene is going to be my end game from when I actually toggle to end game. And let's go to the next one. It's easy to get lost in this UI because you have to do a lot of scrolling. So I hope that they change that in the future. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. I'm supposed to go to scenes. There we go. Watching. So whatever we're watching when, you know, we do those little quick moments where you're like, hey, somebody's like, I sent you a link. Can you check it out? Watch it on stream with me. They want to see your reaction or something. Yeah, that's exactly what this particular scene is for. And let's go to the next scene. This scene is my Be Right Back. And then the last scene is, of course, my ending scene. So we're going to drag and drop these here. Now, if I were to tap that, you're going to basically see my starting screen, my just chatting when I'm tapping these, my in game, where we come right back to this. Oh, did I accidentally turn the camera on? My be right back screen and the ending screen. So now we come back to the end game. I actually tapped the wrong button, y'all. <laughs> but now we're able to see, like, the things that are highlighted and bright, it tells you what scenes you're on. So I think that's pretty intuitive. But if you don't like this, you can actually come here. And you see where it says icon under scenes. We can actually change that. We can go to their icon library. Oh, I don't have anything installed yet. <laughs> Oops. Womp womp. But you know what? We can go to their marketplace. Let's go to their marketplace. Look at their icon packs. They have a lot of icon packs. And I'm just going to keep this simple for 
simplicity, let's look for something they have. Oh, look, we can install. I'm going to go and install a whole bunch of stuff real quick. Okay, cool. And let's go here. So look, they have plugins here, so you can actually scroll through these plugins and use them. Oh, look, they have one for Outlook, Premiere, all this stuff. So that's pretty cool. I know I saw one not too long ago here. Oh, I used that. All right, so what we're looking, oh, these are profiles. These are the plugins that I was looking for. So check it out, somebody made an Elgato Lights plugin. We'll install that and we'll actually talk about that here in a minute too. Oh, the loop that disconnected for a second, y'all. I think it was because it was installing a plugin. Oh, look at that, we reconnected, cool. So now the Elgato Lights are installed. And we're coming back to our streaming workspace. Um, so let's go ahead and play around with that icon that we were talking about, right? Oh, I think I installed the wrong one. I was gonna actually give it the number one. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the marketplace and look for some more icon packs. Oh, look, they have one that's pre-installed as well. I'm just using their easy ones. I. You know, I'm not being too complicated with what I'm doing here. So here we go. This We can use this as screen number one. We can use this as screen number two. We'll use this as screen number three. Screen number four. Screen number five. And screen number six. For the camera, I suppose we can come in here and look for a camera icon. Let's see if we find one we like. I'm just gonna go with the most basic looking thing right now. Okay, I found a camera. We're gonna go with this one. We're gonna select okay. So how do you go live in this thing, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and look here. And should be able to see some toggle stuff here. There's a toggle recording. So why don't we go ahead and uh, put in streaming because streaming is one thing that we're going to do, right? Clearly when we go live. But I don't like this icon. I really don't. So let's look for a streaming icon. If we can't find one here, we can go back to their plugin store and look for one. Well, I tried to find a decent streaming icon for it, but I could not find one. So I think we're gonna leave it as is because they are limited on what they do provide as far as options on their icons, unless you buy an icon profile. Um, and I am not sure how many places provide icon profiles for Loop Deck at this time. I do know Sideshow FX does, but some of them are like color themed. Um, so we're just gonna keep it as is for now. And then, you know, you can customize these as well. I'm sure you'll find something to your liking, but you get the idea on how to go to icon. You can go here. And go to whichever one's you've installed and find one that you may like. And if not, at some point you will be able to upload a profile. Um, there's not really any customization that I see as far as um, icon packs yet. It's very limited, especially in their marketplace. Um, but you see how we were talking about the Elgato controls, right? So we only have six dials at the top here. I'm going to create a new page. And this new page, I'm going to come back to rename this one. Hold on. Let's rename this one OBS Audio Mixer. And this one, page two that I'm gonna rename, is going to be Elgato Key Lights. Okay, so I have two key lights, right? 
here's everything that you can do with these particular things. So given that I have one left and one right, we're gonna basically use these functionalities for each one. So we're gonna use all of these wheels for the left and all of these wheels and buttons for the right. So brightness, I'm gonna wanna adjust brightness here and reset brightness here. I am going to want to reset my temperature here and change the temperature here. I'm not sure what the state does, but I am one to try anything out. So I think maybe it resets everything. There. Oh, check it out. It turns it on or off. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Sorry, I, I get easily amused. Okay, so same thing here. Brightness. Oh, it already did it for me. Okay, cool. And then temperature. And then state. So as you can see, I have one light on and one light off. But if I push the button, it turns my right light on and my right light off. But if I want to go back up to my audio. Oh, did it create a page three? Oh, I don't remember creating a page three. <laughs> Let's delete that. Okay, so I should be able to swipe between my audio and my um, key lights. That's so cool. Now, this is just for OBS. So I'm going to create a new page because we ran out of little buttons to do. And here we go. So I can swipe from left to right on my actual loop deck here. Now, the next thing that we're gonna talk about is Twitch integration, because most streamers stream on Twitch. I don't see anything for YouTube yet, y'all. Um, we could come here and look, but I don't see any YouTube connections yet. So for those who do live streaming on YouTube, this is probably not the tool for you. Most people who are on YouTube usually do. They do edited videos. And with that, you can actually do those with your editing software and use this particular Loop Deck console to make those adjustments. But if you're a live stream a streamer on Twitch, you can actually use the Twitch functions. So you could check to see your followers. Oh, here we go. So this is for your chat. You can do followers only who get to chat for however long. You can slow your chat for however long. If I were to slow the chat, I'd probably do it for a minute. Create the function. It'll take us down here. And like it tells you, you can slow your chat. Um, if you wanted to see how many viewers you have, you could do a viewer count. So when you go live, you're able to see that number of how many people are actually watching your stream. Um, if you wanted to create a marker, you could do so. If you wanted to create a clip, you can do so. Just kind of feedback on clips, whether you're using your stream deck or the loop deck. Clips are generally 30 seconds long. That's just how it's automatically set up. I have not seen any hardware manufacturer for any kind of functionality make it past 30 seconds. Maybe that's something they do in the future to give you the option to change between 30 and 60 seconds. That would be amazing. Um, sometimes there are clips that are worthy of a minute, um, but most of the clips are usually 30 seconds. And in this case, it'll be 30 seconds. You can do your clear chat. Um, you could do your subscribers only chat, emotes only chat. Um, you could create a quick message. Uh, oh, I have to do it here. So I'm going to do a uh, hello. Wait, I think mine was high. You know what? We'll just do thanks. <laughs> I know this function. So I'm going to create this, right? Because my bot will basically run something. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn something on. And I am going to run this function real quick here and tap the thanks. And it'll tell you right there what that function does. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again next stream. So that's something I actually have set up. All right. So let's see here. We can run a commercial. Oh, it tells you how long. Oh, look at that. I could run it for 30, 60, 90 seconds. We'll, we'll just kind of, for fun sakes, we'll just run it for 90 seconds. But look at that. It tells you. <laughs> that's, I kind of like their icons because it's simple, but I would like to customize them. 
Um, let's see, you can slow your chat. Okay, so that's all of the Twitch functions that you can do at this current time. Um, so hopefully that has helped you out with setting up your loop deck. The next thing that we're going to talk about is actually installing a plugin. So you can install a plugin from a profile, right? I'm going to loop deck and it says loop deck wavelength plugin. This is not from Elgato. Again, these are developers who make these particular plugins. Um, and uh, you can control with this particular plugin. It's going to take a minute. It has to disconnect and then reconnect the moment that the plugin is installed. Um, with this particular plugin, you can actually control Wavelink, which is this program right here. So now that it's installed, we're going to see a new little area here. I actually use this more so on my day to day basis. So I'm going to actually come to button number two. And this is going to be my daily workspace. So what I'm going to do is actually switch this around, make this my streaming and make this my daily. And we're going to start here with the, vo the volume. So for here, I want to be able to control my monitor mix. And I'm only controlling my monitor mix, not my stream mix. So what I'm going to do is delete the clock and the scroll. And we're going to go to output destination. Output volume. Oh, here we go. It's output volume. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag our monitor mix volume here. And we're going to drag our monitor mix button here. So this will mute and unmute your monitor mix. And this will also control the overall audio on your wavelength here. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and show you that I'm controlling I am entirely controlling my monitor mix. Now I'm going to mute it. Oh, I guess it did the clock. Oh, I see what happened here. User error. So it's defaulting to when I have Wavelink open, it's defaulting to a clock. But here we go. Now I can mute and unmute. As you can see, you're able to see the X right next to it. And you can see me changing the dial here. So I think that this is a really cool thing to do to control Wavelink. I keep everything at loud because I have everything set up in the specific audio settings that I want. So I personally don't need to control anything in my Wavelink. But if you're somebody who wants to adjust things on the go as an as-needed basis, you can technically do that in Loop Deck. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is just like we set up the dials for OBS, we're going to do the exact same thing for our monitor mix for our personal ears on our Loop Deck. Because you've already set up everything the way that you want for your streaming, so that way your viewers can hear you, right? So you just want to control your own personal audio that you can hear. Um, so this is going to be our input. We just want to see where it says monitor. You want to make sure you're under monitor and not stream. So browser. I'm going to control our browser. So you see how it does the browser for you? We want to control our game. So it'll add that. We want to control our music. So it'll do that for us. And we want to control our... What was next in line? Sound effects. Okay, so we're going to put our sound effects here. Oh, it only did the reset. Okay, we can add this. <laughs> there we go. And then we're going to do our system. Oh, I see. I have to do it this way. Got it. Okay, now it should add both of them there. And then lastly, our voice chat. So that's already stored in these buttons. Right? So let's go ahead and pull up Wavelink again. And what we're going to do is control these dials. As you can see, my, my personal party chat is going up and down, not the stream. 
If I wanted my system audio to be louder, I would control the dial doing this one. And then if I wanted my sound effects to be louder for me to hear, I would have it up. If I wanted my music to be loud, I could do that. Same thing with the game. And same thing with my browser. The reason why I haven't touched anything with the microphone is personally, I don't listen to myself when I'm talking through a microphone. I listen to it aftermath when I'm actually editing videos and I have everything the way that I need it configured for my microphones, whether it's me doing a video or me going live. So I don't have to touch the microphones ever. Anyways, that's just a little bit of an exploration on how to set up a loop deck for streaming. And then if you are a Wavelink user, at least there is a really cool um, made plugin that you can use to control your Wavelink audio too. Anyways, thank you for watching.